Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dilzim with a new Let's Play of the game Kingdom of Loathing. It's an online RPG. It's been around for quite some time. It's been edited a number of times. It is completely free to play, and if you like what you're seeing, you should definitely give it a shot. And if you really like it, you should definitely send them, send them some money. One of the standout uh, qualities of the game is that it is a humorous game. It's very 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 funny and uh, you'll see what I mean in just a second so right here I am actually on the character creation screen you can see that there are six classes available to me and I also have a male or female option I will probably just be playing a male character because I don't believe it actually makes any difference so the six classes the first class is called the seal clubber its description reads seal clubbers hail from the frigid northlands because one character class always hails from the frigid northlands they rely on their muscle to survive Playstyle says seal clubbers hit things with sticks until those things stop moving. Good to know. After the seal clubber, we have the turtle tamer. The description of the turtle tamer is the turtle tamer's mystical connection with his terrapin brethren imbues him with great power. He excels at moving slowly and winning foot races with smug satisfaction. His muscle is the key to his success and to his li long lifespan. Under playstyle, it says turtle tamers fight with the aid of their animal companions and the magical blessings of ancient turtle spirits. They also cast protective spells around their fellow adventurers. After that, we have the Pastamancer, with the description of the arc with his mastery of the arcane secrets of Noodlecraft. The pa Pastamancer is a force to be reckoned with. He relies on his mysticality to get ahead in the world. His playstyle is Pastamancers cast powerful spells while hiding behind their enthralled undead Pasta minions. We also have the Saucerer. Long engaged in an uneasy truce with the Pastamancers, the Guild of Saucers protects the secrets of the ancient brotherhood of gravy makers. Their mysticality is their most important attribute. Saucers cast devastating spells and conjure protective sauces around themselves and other adventurers. We have the Disco Bandit, who boogies to and fro, hither and yon. Whence comes he? No man knows. Whither strikes he next? All men live in fear of him and his moxie. Disco bandits dance out of reach of their foes, while also sneakily stabbing them. And last but not least, we have the Accordion Thief, the scourge of mariachis and polka bands. The Accordion Thieves have plied their malign craft since time out of mind. Their moxie serves them well in both their adventures and their interactions with the ladies. The Accordion Thieves steal accordions, which they then use to fight their opponents and play helpful songs for other adventures. For boring sake, I'm actually going to go with a seal clubber. I'm going to hit things with sticks until those things stop moving. I have to select a character name, which I'm going to see. Uh, name is actually available. Wow, I'm going to play Dilzim. Alright, so here we have the main screen of the game. You can see I have a map with the Kingdom of Loathing. It does uh, suggest that I should set a password for my account, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. You are not going to know what it is. It says it is time to add a password to your account so you can log back into it later, or from a different computer, or while you're at work, or from your cell phone while you're in the bathroom. We are not here to judge you or your hygiene. This is important, so we're not going to let you go on any more adventures until you do it. You're having fun, right? Well, do this and make it so uh, so you can come back and have fun tomorrow, too. We hate goofy password restrictions as much as you do, so this is as much we ask. Your password must contain at least one letter and at least one thing that is not a letter. You know, like a space or a number or a punctuation marker. Or something something. So I actually have to alter my initial password, but that's fine. Alright. You must add and validate an email address to access the chat. That's okay. So, password set! Now I can come back whenever I want, from wherever I want, and do whatever I want. Assuming that whatever I want to do is a thing that you can do in this game, which, let's face it, it totally is. We've got everything. Alright, so let's go back to the main map. So you can see we have the Kingdom of Loathing up top. I have a main map and my inventory. I will check out my inventory here. Though my sack is large, it contains no food or beverages. Though my sack is large, it contains no equipment. Though my sack is large, it contains no miscellaneous items. You can see they don't exactly start you off with a whole lot of stuff going on here. You can see over here on the left, I have 80 adventures remaining for the day. That number goes up, I believe, by 40 a day, and there are a bunch of other ways to make that go higher as well. The Seal Clubber, I am a level 1 Seal Clubber. My Muscle is 3, my Mysticality is 1, and my Moxie is 2. I have 9 hit points and 1 Muscularity point. And I have 0 meat. 
I, you will learn what meat is, and that's okay. Don't worry about it for now. Right now, I have a quest that says visit the Toot Oriole on Mount Noob in the Big Mountains. My last adventure, I have not yet spent an adventure. I also have no recent items, as you might have expected. So, let's go back to the map. If I actually wait here for a second, I saw something kind of funny. Over on the right-hand side, there are some announcements for the game, but, uh, oh, it tells me to click here on the Big Mountains. Well, that's where the Toot Oriole is, so let's go there. Well, and there's Mount Noob, so let's try clicking on Mount Noob and see what I can see. At the top of Mount Noob is the Toot Oriole. Hmm, what does the Toot Oriole have for me? The bird speaks as you approach. Welcome, adventurer. I am the Toot Oriole, and I would like to show you the ropes. Here they are. He points to a pile of ropes piled atop a nearby rock. Now that that's out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. i got a lot of things to teach you. Where should we begin? My inventory, adventuring, skills, my campsite, food, and cocktails. Well, let's start with my inventory. It's the first one on the list. It's dangerous to go alone into the big scary world out there, he says, and nothing keeps an adventurer company as well as some sweet gear. Let's see what I've got lying around that might fit you. The Oriole digs around in a pile of... Uh, junk behind his rock and produces a couple of items. I acquire an item, Seal Clubbing Club. I acquire an item, Old Sweatpants. If I click here, I can see an example. Seal Clubbing Club. This is a club used to club seals. You could probably club other things with it too. Just make sure to regularly, se regularly seal your Seal Clubbing Club with Seal Clubbing Club Seal. It also says it's a meat pasting component and a meat smithing component. I, we won't worry about that for now. It's a the type. It is a weapon. It is a one-handed club. It deals one to two damage and I could sell it for one meat. Yes. Meat is the currency. I also acquire old sweatpants. The old sweatpants say this is a pair of faded gray sweatpants with an elastic drawstring. Most people don't actually break a sweat while wearing them, but sitting on a couch eating potato chips pants doesn't have quite as much of a ring to it. It's pants, uh, it's a power 10, and it cannot be traded or discarded. So it tells me to go to my inventory, clicking on the, on the inventory item at the top of the screen, and equip the two items he just gave me. So now when I go up to the inventory, and I click on equipment, I can see I have a seal clubbing club, which I can equip, and I have a pair of old sweatpants, which I can also equip. Now, I don't have a hat, but, uh, you know, I'm at least doing a little bit better there. So, let's go back to the big mountains, Mount Noob, and talk to the tutorial again. Good job equipping that stuff while you were out. I found this and thought you might like to have it. Click on it to see its description and notice the fancy blue text. That means the item is enchanted and equipping it will improve your stats or abilities in some way. Well, that's really useful information to have. It is a ski seal skull helmet. A seal used to keep the used to use this. Let me try that again. A seal used to use this to keep its brain safe until someone knocked the brains out of it and made it into a helmet to keep your brain safe. Does that strike you as a little bit ironic? Yes, game. Yes, it does. Strike me as a little bit ironic. But it's still going to increase... I forgot there. It's going to increase my weapon damage by one, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that equipped. Okay, so back into my equipment here. Back through to the big mountains. Sometimes there's a lot of clicking over and over here. Next, we have adventuring. I do want to learn about adventuring. Thank you for asking, tutorial. On the left side... Underneath the little uh, hourglass icon, you can see a number. You can see the number of adventures you have left. Adventures are used for adventuring. Every night, you'll get an additional 40 adventures. There's a cave at the base of this mountain here. Let me mark it on your map. And I've unlocked an area. It's called the Noob Cave on Mount Noob in the Big Mountains. You can see it down there. You'll notice the number one next to the ni name of the cave. That means going there will cost you one adventure. That cave is where I keep my crates full of old junk. Head down there and smash them, some of them for me, if you please. All right, so I now I have a new quest over here. It says head into Noob Cave in Mount Noob and smash three crates. I am fighting a crate. I am a little nervous about encountering. A, it says you are. In, I can't even read today. I'm a little nervous about encountering a, a crate this early in the game, but I do get the jump on it. So I attack with my seal clubbing club. I hit for eight damage. Critical hit. Whammo. Zap. Pow. New attack damage record. I win the fight. The crate was empty. Fueled by disappointment and boredom, I pick up some of the splinters of wood and whittle them into popsicle sticks. I get three popsicle sticks and two beefiness. Okay. Let's adventure again. I'm fighting a crate. You're a little nervous about a encountering a crate this early in the game. I get the jump on it. It's a crate. You realize you're never going to survive this unless you get a little crazy, so you crazily bash it with your seal club and club for six damage. Pow! Zot! Boink! You win the fight. This crate was full of fruit. You pocket some of it, trying not to think about how long it's been sitting down here. So I've got an, a lemon and an orange, and I get one strengthliness and two cheek. 
Another crate that I am nervous about encountering this early in the game, but because it's a crate, I do get to jump on it again. I induct it into the clubbed club, clubbing it for five damage. Barf, zap, wham, I win the fight. This crate was full of vodka, and the reason that you know that is because your shoes are now full of vodka as well. You manage to salvage one intact bottle from the moist and fragrant wreckage. I acquire a bottle of vodka. I gain one muscle boundedness and two cheek. I'm going to go back to Mount Noob because I have completed my quest. I go back to Mount Noob and I talk to the Toot Oriole. And he says, Well done, adventurer! I'm sure you've noticed that when you smashed those crates you acquired some items and gained some stat points. Adventuring is the best way to get new stuff and make numbers get bigger. And you probably wouldn't be playing this kind of game if you didn't like watching numbers get bigger. What would you like to learn about next, adventurer? Well, I'd like to learn about my skills. Teach me about my skills, Toot Oriole. Skills are important, and there are two different kinds of them. And there are two different kinds of them. Some of them can be used during fights, and others can be used not during fights. Let's investigate the second kind first. Click on the book icon up there and use your seal clubbing frenzy skill. I have a seal clubbing frenzy. It costs me one muscularity point and I can use it one time. I find and club a stuffed steel. <laughs> Let me read that again. You find and club a stuffed seal. Your blood pressure rises and your muscles surge with puissance. I acquire an effect seal clubbing frenzy. It has a duration of five adventures. What it does, seal clubbing frenzy. You're in a mood, a seal clubbing mood. This makes you feel stronger. Muscle plus two. So right now you can see over here my muscle's gone up to five, and I have an effect that says seal clubbing frenzy five, which means it'll last for five adventures. So I'm going to go back to, if I click on the last, if I click, see where it says noob cave, if I actually click on where it says last adventure just above that, it takes me to the place that is one up from my last adventure. If I clicked on the word Noob Cave, it would send me for an adventure into Noob Cave, but here I can go talk to the Toot Oriole right away. It says, well done. I'm sure you noticed that spell gave you an effect that makes you more powerful. You can see how long that effect will last over there to the left in the character pane, as I explained. It, now it's time for you to learn about combat skills. I've marked the Dire Warren on your map. It's a dangerous place, so you'll need every ounce of Guile, which is worth a pound of Chun-Li, if you can must... <laughs> you can muster if you're going to survive. <laughs> Alright, I have unlocked the Dire Warren on Mount Noob in the Big Mountains. I'm going to head down there and use Clobber on three enemies. Alright, let's do it. I am, I am fighting a fluffy bunny. This is one of the cute fluffy bunnies that populate the Dire Warren. You're not entirely sure why it's called the Dire Warren, as you can't imagine any particular times, dire circumstances or straits coming about because of these little things. Nonetheless, it's probably safer to destroy it. So, let's hit it with Clobber, which costs me zero muscularity points. Whack! I gobsmack the opponent for three damage. I win the fight! I gain nine meat! I gain one strongness and one magicalness. I will adventure again in the Dire Warren. Um, yeah, probably safer to destroy it. Let's whack it. I cobble together a strategy. It involves clobbering my opponent for three damage. I win the fight, and I acquire a bunny liver. This is the liver from a fluffy bunny. It's totally pristine and healthy looking. This bunny must not have been much of a drinker. I also gain two beefiness and a muscle point. You can see my muscle has gone up by one. So I still have one more enemy to use clumber on. And it's still a fluffy bunny. Let's whack it again. I cobble together a strategy. It involves clobbering my opponent for two damage. I win the fight. I gain seven meat and I acquire another bunny liver. Let's go back to Mount Noob and talk to the tutorial again. Nicely done, adventurer. You've probably noticed that in addition to gaining stat points by fighting those fearsome bunnies, you are also gaining meat. Meat is the currency of loathing. You'll want as much of it as you can get, because you'll use it to buy new skills and new equipment and things. In fact, here, take a little of mine to help you get started. I acquire an item, nest egg. Oh, that's clever. This is the egg that the tutorial gave you. He said something about it being full of meat. Okay... What would I like to learn next? I'd actually like to go into my inventory and check out the nest egg. Probably under miscellaneous. Yeah, see, under a nest egg, I have an item I can use that. So let's use that and see what happens. I crack open the egg. Turns out it's full of meat. I gain 150 meat. Well, it only makes sense. It is his nest egg, after all. Let's go back and speak to the tutorial again. The tutorial would like... I would like the tutorial to teach me about my campsite. Just west of the big mountains, there's a campsite for adventurers. You get assigned a spot as soon as you can arrive in the kingdom, and that's where you'll be staying. It's pretty Spartan at the moment. Here, take this tent. I acquire an item, Newbie Sport TM Tent. It says, this is a basic tent. It's durable and weatherproof, and if you put it up at your campsite, you'll recover additional HP and MP when you rest. 
Okay, that's good to know. I can go to my inventory and use the tent to install it at my campsite, and he'll meet me over there when I'm done. So, yeah, let's go do that. I go to my inventory. I have a newbie sport tent. I will use the newbie sport tent. It says, if you ever find yourself low on HP and MP, you can recover it resting at your campsite. Head over there now. Okay, let's head. Let's click on the map. Aha, there's now a new thing on the Kingdom of Loathing map. I can go to my campground. I can go to the campground. I have I have the option to rest. I can rest. I'm going to rest. I lie down on the floor and rest. I gain 9 hit points and 10 muscularity points. I have a kitchen, which doesn't seem to... Well, your campsite includes a handsome and functional outdoor kitchen, which is to say that there's a, pat, a patch of battered linoleum on the ground. I have a colossal closet. I could put things in my closet, but I really have no reason to do that. Let's go back to my campsite and look at the quest log. I have no current quests. My current quest is to return to the tutorial on Mount New, which I will now do. Congratulations on my successful nap. You've probably noticed that the dwelling is a little bare though. Here, take this. Liven it up a little. I acquire a certificate of participation. This certificate proclaims that you are a legitimate participant in the adventuring community of the Kingdom of Loathing. Hang, hang it proudly in your campsite. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop over and... Um, ah, yes. Miscellaneous. Certificate of Participation. I will use that. It is proudly hanged at my campsite, and if I actually go over and check... I don't see it, but... Well, that's fine. Let's head over to the tutorial and get him to teach me about... I would like to learn about cooking. You're a growing adventurer. It's important that you eat to keep up your strength. In fact, eating is one of the best ways for you to get more adventures. Aha, that's good to know. If you're going to eat, you're going to need to learn how to cook. Take this oven and use it from your inventory to install it at your campsite. I require an easy cook oven. This is an easy cook oven powered by a mystical but low wattage bulb. An amateur baker is you. Okay, that says crafting. It looks like I have an easy cook oven. I just need to install it. So I go back into my inventory, install the easy cook oven. The toot oriole flies down and lands on a rock next to you. You'll find a lot of food as you adventure, but nothing ta beats the taste of a home-cooked meal. Here, take these ingredients. I acquire a strawberry. Well, let's see what that does. It says, this is a plump, juicy strawberry. Jumpin' plusy. That's plump and juicy. Okay. I acquire an orange. This is an orange. It's an orange. I acquire a lemon. This is a lemon. It's shaped exactly like a lemon. I also acquire three popsicle sticks. Uh, this is a run-of-the-mill popsicle stick. It's not one of the cool ones with a joke written on it, but it's also not one of the gross ones with sticky popsicle residue and someone else's spit on it. So I guess you should count your blessings. So I can go click on the item to go to the crafting screen and see if I can't figure out something to make with these ingredients. Okay, let's try a popsicle stick and a lemon. Let's make as many as possible. I acquired two lemon popsicles. Say, that looks delicious. I should go to my inventory and eat it. But, because I am not one to rest on my laurels, I'm also going to make um, some orange sickles. Orange popsicle. This is a delicious looking orange popsicle. Compared to an a apple popsicle, it's a horse of a different color. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to make another one of those, and I'm also going to make a strawberry one. A strawberry popsicle. It says, this is a delicious strawberry popsicle. Eating this, like living, is easy with eyes closed. Okay, well, let's go check out my inventory here. Under my consumables, I forgot to check out what the lemon popsicle said. If life gives you lemons, and you live in a freezer, make this. <laughs> okay, so let's try eating a lemon popsicle. I eat the popsicle with gusto. It's better than eating it with gust. That jerk always steals half of my popsicle. I gain two adventures. Well, let's eat again two more adventures. Let's try the orange popsicle. You eat the popsicle, and orange you glad you did? Oh, god damn you. Let's try that again. Yeah, same thing. And let's eat the strawberry popsicle. I eat the popsicle, and I'm filled with a sneaking suspicion that nothing is real. What? What? Okay, well... Let's uh, return to the tutorial on Mount Noob uh, before we think about that too hard. Food is good, and you should eat as much of it as you can every day so you'll have plenty of adventures to spend. What would you like to learn about next, adventurer? Well, I've only got one thing left. Teach me about cocktail crafting. 
Adventurers do not live by bread alone. Booze is also a crucial part of your daily diet. It's like my dear old mum used to say. It's a rough world out there, too. Now be a dear and fetch me another drink. You'll need this. I acquire an item. My first shaker. It says, This is a colorful, cheap plastic cocktail shaker, useful for making not-so-potent potables. I can go to my inventory and install it in my kitchen, which I will do. It's under miscellaneous. We will install that there. I install the cocktail crafting kit in my stylish outdoor kitchen, making it even more stylish. And the tutorial flies down and lands on a nearby rock. Cocktails are a fine way to make yourself less sober. Here, take these ingredients. I get a grapefruit, an olive, a lemon, and a bottle of whiskey, a bottle of vodka, and a bottle of gin. And now I need to go, like the last one, click on the top menu of my crafting screen and see if you can't figure out how to whip up a refreshing cocktail. Okay, I hope you guys know how to make drinks, because, uh, alright, let's see, I got a bottle of gin. Let's see what happens when I mix that with an olive. I've acquired a martini. Say, that looks like a mighty refreshing cocktail. You should go to your inventory, click on the, uh, the, the inventory, and drink it. Okay, let's see what else I can figure out here. I've got, uh, whiskey and lemon. Let's try that. I acquire a whiskey sour. Oh, I didn't read the uh, description for the martini. I'll, I'll do that in a minute. This is a drink made with whiskey and lemon juice. Think about how sour it is now. Think about how whiskey it is. Now think about how sour it is. Okay, I've got. Uh, I've still got two bottles of vodka. Let's see what happens when I mix that with a grapefruit. That doesn't combine to make a refreshing cocktail. But you know what? That's okay. If I had hung on to some of my fruit from before instead of turning it all into popsicles, I would probably be able to make something with the bottles of vodka. But we'll hang on to that for now. I'm going to go back into my inventory and take a look at my... Aha, I have booze. Let's take a look at my martini here. This is my basic martini, gin and an olive. Well, okay, that's not as exciting as I thought. Let's drink the martini. I drink the martini. It is sophisticated. It is as sophisticated as it is delicious. I gain six adventures. I gain ten cheek, which gives me some moxie points, and I gain three drunkenness. Let's, uh... And it's uh, listed here as temulency, but I think that'll change from screen to screen. They've got a, a wide variety of uh, synonyms for drunkenness. So I'm going to head over back over to the the Dire Warren and or uh, the the Mount Noob and talk to the tutorial. All right, just like in the real world, booze is a great way to get extra adventures. Just be careful not to overdo it, or you might knock yourself out of commission for the rest of the day. You have learned everything I have to teach you. Now it is time for you to set out on your own and find your fortune in the kingdom. Might I suggest with the council suggest starting with the Council of Loathing over in Seaside Town? Here, I'll mark the town on your map. The reason I'm not drinking more is because there's a possibility that you can get uh, after you've had enough to drink when you when you start to adventure bad things tend to start happening. I'll demonstrate that once, but I'm not going to go into any great amount of deal here. <laughs> so, I can configure my menu. These are the two moons, Ronald and Grimace, with a small dark moon. I can ask for help, I can report a bug, I can log out. I can donate, which is really important if you like this game. I did buy, uh, did buy something once uh, from their store. Uh, there's community, which is... Uh, Podcasts, Twitter feed, on Reddit, on Facebook, on their forums. There's a store of loathing where you can buy cool stuff to help support their site. T-shirts and calendars and coffee cups and stuff. There's an unofficial fan site which has a treasure trove of game information and community, community resources. Now, some of the puzzles and things in this are pretty obscure, and I'm going to do my best very much not to look at anything that might uh, give me the answers. Um, and that includes Cold Front, but you can go check it out if you want. I've also got a number of options here. I will uh, probably in between videos I will set up the the game so that it looks like uh, looks like what I want. I will also add. Uh, I I will now head over to well, what's a uh, what's here. Uh, I have a message. I well I don't have a message. I have an inbox with no messages, but that's okay. Nobody's uh, messaging me. If you are interested in getting involved in playing Kingdom of Loathing and you do want to send me a message, we can maybe get together and set up a guild or something. So let's go to Seaside Town. I have, uh, there are a number of places that I can click on. There's a Market Square, there's a Clan District, there's a Council of Loathing, there's a Museum, there's an Odd Jobs Board, there's a right side of the tracks and a wrong side of the tracks, but he suggested to visit the Council of Loathing first, the tutorial, so we will do that. 
Say, it's a new adventure. Welcome, welcome. Boy, we can sure use people like you right about now. Oh, but where are our manners? We're the Council of Loathing, and you are Dilzim. That's a hero's name if we ever heard one. Listen, we're going to have plenty of work for you, but first you should probably spend a little time getting your bearings. You look a little underpowered, so maybe you can head off to one of the less dangerous parts of the kingdom. Let's say the Haunted Pantry and Spooky Raven Manor on the right side of the tracks, the outskirts of Cobb's Knob on the nearby plains, or the Sleazy Back Alley on the wrong side of the tracks in the seaside town. Come back after you've explored a little and we'll be ready with your first assignment. Oh, and you should really consider joining your class's guild so you can learn new skills and stuff. Head over to the Brotherhood of the Smackdown on the right side of the tracks and talk to Gunther. Yeah, let's start there. Alright, let's go into the Brotherhood of the Smackdown, and here is Gunther, Lord of the Smackdown. So, you want to join the Brotherhood of the Smackdown, eh? Gunther asks, well, first you'll have to prove your manliness. Okay, you reply, what do I have to do? Our usually test of manhood our usual test of manhood is a sausage mes measuring competition. A what? The now goblins on the nearby plains are the kingdom's premier sausage makers. They guard their sausages jealous jealously, particularly the big ones. Go over there and find the biggest sausage you can, defeat or intimidate the guards, and bring the sausage back here for measurement. Well that's not what I expected, but sure, let's go check out the nearby plains. Aha, there's a nearby plains on my map now. There's Cobb's Knob. Ooh, this will cost me an adventure. Let's adventure in Cobb's Knob. On a dirt road outside of Cobb's Knob, you trip over a rock and knock yourself briefly unconscious on a different, larger, and sharper rock. When you come to, you find yourself in a chain gang being forced to haul sewage in and out of the knob. You're not quite sure why they're taking sewage into the knob, but yours is not exactly the reason why, given the circumstances. But one way or another, the servitude must come to an end. But how? I can. I have a choice here. I can serve my sentence, I can rise and revolt, or I can plot a cunning escape. I think rise and revolt probably plays mostly to my strengths here. I decide to convince my fellow prisoners to rise up with me in rebelling against my knob goblin captors. Unfortunately, they're all pretty comfortable with the status quo, quo and your speeches fall on deaf ears. Unfazed, you, dis unfazed, you decide to conduct the revolution single-handedly. Grunting and straining, you drag the entire chain gang away from the knob to freedom. It's quite a workout. You gain six muscle-boundedness, but I did not get a sausage, so let's try again. I'm fighting a knob goblin barbecue team. This is a deadly combination of a neophyte knob goblin chef and a magically animated barbecue grill. Sometimes these things are friendly, but this one appears to be pretty aggressive. Well, let's attack it with my seal clubbing skull. Uh, seal clubbing club. I hit it for six damage. Critical hit. Zap. Wax. Plat. I win the fight. I gain ten meat, and I acquire a bowl of cottage cheese. This is a bowl of cottage cheese. If you like cottage cheese, it looks pretty good. If you don't, it doesn't. There's a meat smithing component and a meat pasting component. Okay. I gain one fortitude, I gain a muscle point, and muscle points are the ones that when I gain enough of them cause me to go up a level. I, I think. I, I may gain I may gain th uh, points toward levels with Moxie and uh, Mysticality as well. Oh, and you can see over here, uh, I, I forgot to mention, uh, it does change from adventure to adventure. It's now inebri inebriety. So, let's adventure again on the outskirts of Cobb's Knob. I am fighting a Knob Goblin assistant chef. The Knob Goblin is currently training to be a chef. He proudly wields his set of neophyte tongs and whistles a happy cooking song as he prepares to beat you senseless. You get the jump on him. Let's attack! I induct him into the club club, clubbing him for 8 damage. Pow! Bam! Wham! I gain 8 meat and 2 beefiness. Well, let's try again. I am fighting a sleeping Knob Goblin Guard. There's a Knob Goblin Guard who's fallen asleep at the switch. The switch, in this case, is the entrance to Cobb's Knob. Normally these guys are pretty tough, but they're notoriously hard to wake up, so you could probably take this one. I get to jump on him. Let's use Clobber here. I clobber my opponent harder than a cobbler clobbers a nail, dealing two damage. I win the fight. I gain five meat, one fortitude, and two chutzpah. I am again fighting a Knob Goblin Barbecue Team, the deadly combination of a Neophyte Goblin Chef and a magically animated barbecue grill. Sometimes these things are friendly, but this one appears to be pretty aggressive. I do get to jump on it, and I attack it with my seal clubbing club for 7 damage. Boink, zap, kapow! I win the fight. 9 meat and 2 fortitude. Aha, here we are. You see a group of now goblins standing around. They appear to be guarding something, which is how you know that they're guards and not just ordinary knob goblins. They brandish their spears and try to look menacing as you approach. Back off, human one says. We've got a really big sausage here, and we're not going to let you get your hands on it. I bet it isn't that big, you say. You probably just measured it in centimeters or something, so it seems bigger. Ha! Shows what you know. Take a look. The goblins move aside a little so you can see the grill they're guarding. The sausage atop it is, in fact, pretty huge. Your jaw hurts just looking at it. This would be the perfect sausage to prove your manliness to Gunther. Grab the sausage, so to speak. I mean, literally, says the button. 
How long have you guys been guarding the sausage, you ask? Oh, uh, maybe about four hours now. That long? Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Huh? There's nothing wrong with any of us. You crack your knuckles in a menacing fashion. Not yet, there isn't. The guards shrink visibly under your icy glare and don't move to stop you as you grab the sausage and stride away. As you leave, you hear some commotion behind you. Hey, what the heck is wrong with you fools? You were supposed to be guarding that sausage. Sorry, boss, says the guard. I guess we blew it. I acquire an item, an 11-inch knob sausage. This game, man. <laughs> 11 inch knob sausage. If I give you an inch, you'll want one of these. Okay, well, let's go take that back to Gunther here at the Brotherhood of the Smackdown. I pull out my giant sausage and give it to Gunther. He looks suitably impressed. 11 inches, he exclaims. That's the biggest one I've seen since, I've seen since that Holmes fella joined back in 72. He shakes your hand and reaches around to give you a firm pat on the back. Well done, initiate. Welcome to the Brotherhood of the Smackdown. You should talk to Torg if you want to train some skills, and that guy at the Smacketeria, and see the guy at the Smacketeria about getting some provisions. Oh, and if you want to use the guild meat car, talk to Olaf, the janitor. Well, let's talk to Torg the trainer first. As an initiate of the Brotherhood of the Smackdown, I am now eligible to train here. I can learn a couple of level 1 skills. I don't have enough to, to learn any of the level 2 skills. I can learn Lunge Smack. By lunging before you smack, you can deal more damage than if you smack without lunging. Or if you lunge after smacking instead. But who does that? It's a normal attack that deals 5 extra damage if it connects. Ooh. I can also learn Fortitude of the Muskox. It is a passive cost no magic no muscularity points musk oxen are legendarily resilient if you cut them they bleed but then they stop bleeding and they're good as new now you can be like a musk ox regenerate one to two hp per adventure that seems really handy i'm actually going to train that i have now have the fortitude of the musk ox okay says to go back and check in with the council of loathing what i've been playing for a little over a half an hour here so i'm going to stop it i still have 83 adventures and i will probably have another video up uh, as i try to blow through the rest of these before the end of the day but uh, i want to thank you all for joining me i hope you enjoyed it as you can see the game's pretty funny and uh, I, I look forward to recording some more videos excellent have a great night and this has been dilsim